The Mets made history this offseason thanks in part to billionaire Steve Cohen opening up his wallet. The opening day payroll of the Mets set an MLB record by totaling $353.5 million. With the massive spending, fans, analysts, and degenerate gamblers had very high expectations going into the season. But as we know, they performed very well under expectations. From injuries to mishaps, the ingredients were all there for generational hurt. So with all this, we ask if the 2023 Mets are the most disappointing team of all time. Totally sports-esque. Major League. First, let's look at how the Mets were projected to do this year. Going off Sportsbook's odds, the Mets over underline for total wins was 91.5. And as of September 6th, Fangrass projects the Mets to finish with 76 wins. There is obviously no telling if they will actually finish below or above this, but if they do, that would put them 15 and a half wins under the projected total. And going by preseason Sportsbook's odds and fan graph projections, the Mets actually aren't the most disappointing team in this sense. The Padres joined the Mets with their projections to finish 15 and a half games under expectations, but there are actually three teams ahead of these two. Tied for second is the two Missouri baseball teams with the Cardinals and Royals who both are projected to finish 16 and a half wins under. And the top of the disappointment mark is the Chicago White Sox, who are projected to finish 19 and a half wins under expectations. So in this sense, the Mets aren't the most disappointing team of this year. But there's a difference between the expectations of these disappointing teams, and that's the payroll. Though there are three teams ahead of the Mets and the Padres in the disappointment market, the difference is that those three teams all finish below league average in terms of payroll. Of course, the Cardinals and White Sox were expected to contend, with the Cardinals actually being the favorites to win their division. But with both the Mets and Padres spending money like the Yankees, they naturally had high expectations. And there's a little bit of irony, as the Yankees, who had the second highest payroll, will most likely not be making the playoffs. To quote Aristotle, when your team spends $353.5 million, you expect them to win. With the Mets setting a record for payroll and falling well below expectations, where do they rank amongst the most disappointing teams of baseball? Using the sportsbook's odds expectations we used earlier, we can go as far back as 1990 using sportsoddshistory.com. And starting with the decade of the 1990s, the most disappointing team was the 1992 Dodgers. Despite winning 93 games the year before, and sending out the nicknamed Outfield of Dreams, featuring Eric Davis, Brett Butler, and Daryl Strawberry, injuries and slumps led to their worst season since 1908, when they finished 63-99, and 24 and a half wins under expectations. In the 2000s decade, we had the most disappointing team since 1990, with the 2004 Arizona Diamondbacks. Three years after winning their only World Series, they believed they could contend with the NL West being weaker than years before. But instead, the Diamondbacks posted the worst NL record since the 1965 Mets by going 51-111, 31 and a half wins under expectations. And in the most recent decade of the 2010s, the most disappointing team was the 2018 Baltimore Orioles. Expectations weren't very high as they finished 12 games under 500 the year before, but they obviously didn't expect to finish with the second worst record in MLB history in a 162 game season. When they finished 47 and 115, finishing 25 and a half wins under expectations and just 61 games out of first. If we look at these three teams' payrolls and adjust them for inflation, they're obviously not close to the Mets 2023 payroll. But something to look at in comparing the Mets to them is the cost per win in regards to the payroll. The 92 Dodgers had to pay $1.5 million per win. The 2004 Diamondbacks had to pay $2.2 million per win. And the 2018 Orioles had to pay $3.7 million per win. And how does that compare to the 2023 Mets? Well, assuming they finish with 76 wins, that means the Mets will pay 4.6 million per win. And right behind them is the Yankees, who will pay 3.4 million per win, and the Padres who will pay 3.1 million per win. In recent memory, there aren't many who come close to the 2023 Mets. Some examples with adjusted inflation are the 2018 Orioles who we just mentioned, the 2017 Tigers who had to pay $3.5 million per win, and the Giants in that same year who had to pay $3.4 million per win. 
Of course, the payroll doesn't always tell the full story. With the recent success of the Rays, they naturally had high expectations despite having the third lowest payroll, more than the Orioles, who have both delivered well over expectations. But in the case of the 2023 Mets and Padres, the payroll does tell a lot of the story. What makes a team a disappointment is the hype going into the season that builds upon the previous year. The Padres made it to the NLCS last year after finally topping the Dodgers. And to build even more hype, this offseason they spent a lot of money to go along with the return of Fernando Tatis Jr. But as we know, they are going to end as a massive disappointment. And in the case of the Mets, despite losing in the wildcard round, they still won over 100 games, and built massive hype by spending money like it's nothing, and even paying for a commercial during the Super Bowl. But as we obviously already know, they ended up as the most disappointing team of the year, in my opinion. And the reason they are to me, is because when a team destroys the payroll record, no matter what team it is, to me, they become a World Series or bust team. And with the Mets competing with the Nationals for fourth place, they are kind of a bust. When you think of other disappointing teams throughout baseball, you need some added context. Such as the 2012 Marlins who built a new stadium, increased their payroll by over 60 million, then won just 69 games. We also see this in the case of the 2015 Mariners, who spent to build on their prior success, only to fall short or teams like the 2020 Nationals, or 2004 Marlins, or 1970 Mets, who failed to build on a World Series winning team. But in the case of the 2023 Mets, you just need to look at the payroll, the previous year, and what their final record will be to understand the massive levels of disappointment. So are the 2023 Mets the most disappointing team of all time? It's very hard to point at one team, as every year, there are many fan bases who end up disappointed at varying levels. But I feel that decades from now, when you are asked to point out a disappointing team, you'll probably think of the 2023 Mets first, because of the hype, massive payroll, media attention, and how things ended up. And in a sense, this year can be called the year of the disappointing teams, as the 2023 Padres and Yankees will also be remembered for massive spending and massive disappointments amidst a time of expanded playoffs. Maybe this will be a sign of things to come as teams see more opportunity to make the playoffs. And one great year can motivate a team in front office like no other. So, in the end, 2023 has been a very hard year for Mets fans, and the team will be remembered for unfortunate reasons. But, it's not entirely over for the Mets, cause like angered gamblers, this will probably motivate Steve Cohen to spend more. And he might as well try to get known Mets fan Kingpin to help him. It's about the Mets, baby. Love the Mets. All right, baby. Let's go get a home run, baby. Love the Mets. Let's go Mets.